Hi everybody, it's Christian. This is just a quick tutorial and hopefully it'll be useful for those of you who are trying to make Ableton and MainStage work together a little bit smoother, or those of you that want to send program changes out of Ableton to another piece of software. One of my frustrations with Live is that it hasn't allowed me to send program changes at specific parts of a song uh, or and multiple program changes per scene at different bar measures. Unless, of course, I split the song down into loads of parts, but even then, I can only send a program change per section that I've broken it down to. And I've done videos on that before. It's relatively easy to do. You insert a MIDI clip. Um, let's just put one in here. So obviously, I've got main stage and Ableton open next to each other. But if I inserted this MIDI clip, I routed it to the IAC driver, and I put a program change in here, um, let's say program change 10, then when that scene is triggered off, it would jump to program change number 10 or program number 10 in main stage, so number 10 here would be frozen verb. So that's that's great and that's wonderful and that's really valuable. Um, but what I, what I want to be able to do is start using Abel Mendoza's Worship Guitar Essentials, but be able to trigger between different sounds or different patches that he's made or patches that I subsequently make using his pedals at different parts within a song. Enter Max for Live and a Max for Live device that's enabled this to happen called CC to program change. Now let me just talk you through how this is working and what I've done and you guys can go and play with this. Uh, I've only did this a few hours ago so I've not really implemented it properly but it looks stable and good to me. So the first thing I did inside main stage was I reset uh, by clicking down here reset the program numbers. So then it just simply goes program 1 through to 22. You can do it a different way. Uh, I believe you can click on the attributes and give each one its individual program change. You can do that. The other thing I did was make sure that all the tempo changes were off so that I could send tempo information as well. So obviously all the delays um, and anything else that's using any of the time signature information will pull that tempo from Ableton. Then in Ableton, I set up a MIDI track routed to the IAC driver and dropped in this Max for Live device. Now, when you drop in the Max for Live device, you have to tell it what CC control code is going to listen to to convert to a program change. So I've used 119 for no other reason than it was just there and I scrolled to it and I thought if I always use 119, I'll remember it. And then I just created a MIDI clip. So let me show you this demo one up here. Uh, I've created a MIDI clip and if I click into it, in the envelope, I've selected MIDI control 119 and then I've just set breakpoint so to begin with it's going to be on uh, number 22 it's going to step down to 17 at bar 5 a little bit later on it's going to step down to number 10 and then just at bar 17 I think that is it's going to step down to 3 so let me play that and if I click play up here watch what happens to the program changes over in main stage so now if we press play a little bit laggy because we've got lots going on. We're straight in at number 22. You can see that. I'm not pressing anything else. When we hit the next bar measure, so just after bar 5, it jumps down to number 17. And so on. And I've got a lot going on on my computer at the moment. I'm doing some um, backing up. I've got something um, rendering in the background. And I've also got these two programs open. And I'm capturing the video as well. So it's a little bit delayed. But without any, any of that, it's working fine. There we go. We jump into Frozen Verb. And then I'll let it run one more time. And then it will jump down again. Let's just wait for that one to jump down. There we go, jump down. And let me just stop that. So they're numbers that I just used at complete random just to show the premise. But let's open up a song. Um, so here's Glorious Day. Now let's say that I wanted to start Glorious Day. And I'm just going to clip into that MIDI clip a minute. And this is where my computer starts to hang. And lets me down. Now oh, there we go. So let's say that um, Glorious Day, I want to start off using patch 17, so that's over here, is uh, an ambient swell, so I might want to start the song just ambient swelling. But then as soon as everything hits that big chord, I want to jump down to number 3, which is going to be my rhythm on my AC30. That would be really achievable. And all I would do is simply insert a MIDI clip, turn off the loop, set it for the number of bars that I need, or in this instance enough bars to be able to do the transition, and then I go along and I just put my brakes in, let's say at bar 33, now this is just I've just made this up, but at bar 33, I wanted to jump to, um, I don't know, the slapback sound. So then I could do that one and I could drag it up to measure number 15. Uh, and I've started to build an automation now that's going to work perfectly for the song. So now when the song plays, we're straight in at number 17. The song's going to play in the background. 
I'm on ambient pad 17. Oh, sorry, uh, on patch 17, ambient swells. I could be playing along on the electric guitar. I, I'm not at the moment. But if I was playing along on the electric guitar, main stage is going to output that uh, incredible patch. And then as we hit, hit this big breakdown, or sorry, the big chord where everybody comes in together, uh, my patch is going to change to my rhythm sound so I can start to build with everybody else. Let me just show you this. And it's changed for me to come in on this chord. So you get the idea now. And if I was to let this run, let me just wind it forward a few bars. So again, now as we hit bar 33, if you watch over here, it's going to jump. So hopefully it gives you an idea. You could send program changes in all different types of directions. I'm a huge fan of this Worship Guitar Essentials. I've been playing around with guitar inside of Ableton for the last couple of weeks. Uh, really happy with the sounds, um, but wanted something a little bit more. And I don't think you can beat some of these Logic sounds and some of the way that Able uh, and his team have put some of this stuff together. So Sunday I'm going to give it a go live. I'm going to play my electric guitar and lead from my electric guitar, but not worry about my effects. I've got enough to worry about with Ableton, remembering the chords, remembering the lyrics, and leading the church. So I just need to trigger the tracks off, and the tracks are going to automate and call up the sections of the song that I need. In Ableton, where it's broken down into sections, and I'm using my repeat button and follow, I still don't need to worry because I know the guitar parts are going to follow along and loop around as well. So hope that's helpful. Um, if you improve this or if you come up with any tweaks or you can see ways of making it better, then share it, share and share alike. And together we can all refine what we do. Um, hope that helps. Take care. God bless.